Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and this is the third episode of our Jeep Grand Comanche project car. We're in my basement with the remnants of our new process gear 247 transfer case. This is the standard transfer case that's on the Grand Cherokee Limited in the 2000 model year. It uses a Verilock coupling to transfer power front and rear. One thing that a lot of people don't understand is that the vast majority of four-wheel drive vehicles don't have a center differential. They have a transfer case instead. It doesn't really do the same thing. A differential is like what you find in either a front-wheel drive car in the front or in a rear-wheel drive car in the rear. It helps transfer power side to side, but it allows one wheel to spin faster than the other. On the surface of things, this looks like a standard part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. We have our input from the transmission right here. We have our output to the front differential on this other side. They're connected to one another via a chain, and that's what is slipping in our transfer case. The chain has stretched a little bit. This is the main shaft of the transfer case, and it's what allows power to go from this input shaft to the rear wheels. Now, normally the rear wheels are directly connected, so it's one-to-one, -one, there's nothing in between them, there's no differential interacting between the transmission and the rear differential, but there is an optional two-speed planetary gear set that we can see right in here inside this transfer case, and this two-speed planetary gear set can be engaged for four low. Now, this main drive shaft right here is connected to the output to the front via that chain, as I said. And what's going on right here is this Verilock unit, as you can see. And that's what's defective in our transfer case. We'll get this a little closer to the camera so you can see that right there. This is the Verilock unit. This is just the sprocket to the chain. Now, the Verilock unit has some clutch plates in it. And if the front wheels and the rear wheels are spinning at a different rate, the multi-plate clutch in this Verilock unit connects, and it connects to allow power to flow to the front. It's not a differential, although it acts kind of like one. Tonight's conundrum is that this Verilock unit is firmly attached to this main shaft. Uh, I wasn't really clear on how it's supposed to be attached. All the instructions simply say remove. So you're supposed to just remove the snap ring that's holding this, oops, holding this right onto the main shaft. And then supposedly it's supposed to just pop right off, although it hasn't popped right off for us. Every set of instructions that we could find simply says remove. They don't tell you how to remove it. It's just supposed to be really obvious for everybody else. All the forums I could find didn't really say. No one really could be quite clear because a lot of people aren't really adventurous enough to pop open their transfer case and find out. But we are here, so uh, we're going to beat on it with a sledgehammer and see if that helps. Not really helping so far. We beat it against some concrete and now we have our progressive coupler off the shaft. We probably should have resorted to a press, but since I don't have one in my basement, we couldn't do that. Um, this particular unit is about a $400 replacement part inside this transfer case, so we're not going to bother replacing it, even though I'm pretty sure it's defective. It's only required for four high in this transfer case because it has that Verilock unit. Um, in four low, what the transfer case does is it simply engages a dog clutch right here to these teeth on this particular ring, and that causes um, the transfer case to lock the front and rear output shafts together. So when you're in four low, because this unit is locked one to one, front and rear, you should stick to soft surfaces only. So don't drive in four low in any part time or even a transfer case like this where it has a full time four wheel drive mode and you're in four low. Be sure and read your instruction manuals because most of those systems tell you that you need to stay on loose surfaces only. After taking the transfer case apart, we discovered exactly what was wrong with four high in the transfer case. And it's actually more serious than just the Verilock unit, which as it turns out may be fully functional. It's actually the main, main shaft here. Uh, you can see these splines right here. They're actually worn right along there. And if we take a look at the Verilock unit on the inside, it has that same pattern of wear inside the Verilock unit itself. So even if we replace the Verilock unit, that wouldn't fix the four high problem. We would actually have to replace this main shaft, which is about 125 to $180, as well as that $400 Verilock unit. So it's about five, $600, depending on where we find the parts in order to make four high work. It's just not worth it for our application, so we're just going to not bother. We still need to put the Verilock unit back on because it's what holds the roller bearings that are inside this sprocket right in there to the main shaft. So we do need to have the Verilock unit in place. It's just not going to be doing anything for us. This also explains the large amount of metal we found in the transfer case itself. So if we actually look at the bottom of the transfer case, there was a decent amount of metal down there. We initially thought that it might have been from the sprockets and the chain, which were indeed slipping inside the transfer case, but it was in fact from this main shaft as well as the corresponding splines inside the Verilock unit.
here's why the Verilock unit doesn't matter in our application. This is the main shaft. We've put it all back together with our new sprocket right here. And power goes to the rear wheels via this gear right here at the very top, this thin little gear. This gear mates to the planetary gear set that's right here inside the transfer case. That transfer case gets its power from the transmission on the other side. Back here on the main shaft with all the parts connected to it, you can see how the four high and four low mechanism actuates when you pull the lever inside the car because the Grand Cherokee in this model year is still a manual selector. So there's a selector fork. The selector fork mates right there with this collar that's rotating around inside the transmission. Again, this is the rear wheels that are spinning right there. If your Verilock unit is working, and your front wheels start rotating a different speed than the rear wheels, as you can see those two move independently of one another, then the Verilock clutch pack will lock up and it will cause this whole unit to spin as one. If you're in four low and the selector shaft moves down, it forces these collar teeth right here together. As you can see, that gear mates up right like that. And that has that same effect. It causes the front wheels and the rear wheels to spin together at the same rate. You'll notice there is a little bit of play in that setup. That's to help you engage it manually. If there wasn't that play, it'd be really hard to get that lever in. There's a little bit of play in this setup. So that way, if your gears are not quite lined up, you can see there's a little bit of play right there. And that's sometimes why it's difficult to get it into four low. And you may have to move the vehicle a little bit in order for that to seat properly. Now it's time for reassembly. It's going to take two people because we have to insert this at the same time as we insert the new sprocket on the other side. So I'll let you hold this, Rob. Right there. Fork, fork is in place. Mate the chain up. One side, mate the chain up on the other. There you go. Well, I know, hang on, we're not over here. You have to pull, might have to pull that out. Okay, right there. If you take a look at it this way, you can see what was going wrong and why we had to work on this transfer case. The old chain was quite a bit looser than this, and so it was slipping on these sprockets because these teeth aren't terribly deep. And when you were trying to transfer power to the front axle and there was actually a load on the front axle, it would slip, and uh, there were a lot of metal shavings going on inside. So, so that's got to be like that. like that, and that give a little bit of cushion between that, which would make sense. So that way, if you like got it and it was like there, it would have like a little bit of no, and then if you got it just just right, it would go in. It would go chunk.